Which New York Mets prospects should be on the table to be dealt at this year's trade deadline and which prospects are untouchable? I discussed this on Saturday's edition of Locked On Mets prior to the Jesse Winker trade. One of the players I said the Mets could trade is Tyler Stewart. He did get dealt. To hear the rest of my prospect breakdown heading into the deadline, check out this clip from Saturday's show. You are Locked On Mets, your daily New York Mets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Not much. Now, when we talk about the idea of the New York Mets going all in at this trade deadline, we have to be realistic about who the president of baseball operations is in David Stearns and what his mission is this season. The goal the whole time was put together a team that can compete and be in playoff contention at the deadline. And then this would be the time to go more all in on this roster than the off season. They weren't going to trade for Juan Soto. If they didn't know they were going to be in the race in the off season. Now that they're in the race, they are holding on to the first wild card spot. This is a time to add, but there was always that idea that you do not want to sacrifice your future for 2024. So, There are still prospects that I think will be untouchable at this deadline. Let's talk about those names first. Brandon Sproat, untouchable. Representing the Mets in the Futures game, has frontline potential as a starting pitcher. You're not trading Brandon Sproat, and Christian Sky is right there with them. Top pitching prospect in the Mets system. Sproat maybe has that title by the end of the year. Regardless, those two arms are your future in the rotation, and they're both close. Well, Scott's already here. Sproat could be part of the rotation next year. You're not dealing that. Jet Williams is the other one. Came into this season as the top prospect in this system. Haven't seen him all year due to injury. Doesn't matter. You're not trading him. Those three to me are the most untouchable, but there's still more untouchables that I have here. Ryan Clifford. I would not trade him for any player at this deadline. Probably not in general. I just want to see Clifford finish his development with the Mets and come up to the big league roster because he has the chance to be a star player with a ton of pop. He has the best power in the system right now. He was the second piece the Mets got back in the Justin Verlander trade. And the funny thing was, you go back a year ago, listen to that show. I think I was very high on Clifford, and I said he might end up being the better piece in this deal. The way he's played this year, you never know, because he's really started to swing it well in double A, and he's still super young. There's a lot to be excited about with Ryan Clifford. The Mets are not dealing him. Drew Gilbert, I still deem untouchable, but the funny thing is he's more touchable than Clifford to me because Carson Benj makes Gilbert a little bit more expendable. The Mets just drafted Carson Benj. He's going to just stick to playing outfield. He's not going to be a two-way player. He's got five-tool potential, and he's just a really good ball player. They're similar in some ways. I think the Mets hope that Benj has more upside. Regardless, I wouldn't trade either at this deadline. So that's six players that, to me, are firm untouchables. Brandon Sproat, Christian Scott, Jet Williams, Ryan Clifford, Drew Gilbert, and Carson Benj might just be the top six prospects in this system. Now we get to two more that I think will also not be dealt under any circumstances. Jonah Tong had an unbelievable season so far, was just lights out in Port St. Lucie, earned a promotion to high A Brooklyn, Was he 20 years old still, I think? And the guy has just put up great numbers. I think he's staying no matter what. The other one, Giovanni Rodriguez, the top international signing from this last class the Mets had, catching prospect. I don't see the Mets trading him, especially at this deadline. Now we get to my list of prospects that I would only want the Mets to deal in a blockbuster. And we start with the guy that I was very much on the line with, and that is Blade Tidwell. I think Blade Tidwell is the best prospect I would deal at this deadline. He's in AAA, had some mixed results, really good pitching prospect. I think he's a little bit expendable now that you have Brandon Sproat really firing on all cylinders, but I do not want the Mets to trade Blade Tidwell, and I don't think they will. The next guy in that same ilk for me, you might think I was going to say Luis and Helicuna, and we will get to him, but first, I got to talk about Brett Beatty, who is not technically a prospect. And there has been some rumblings. Oh, maybe the Mets trade Brett Beatty. Maybe they deal him. I think he'd be trading low on Brett Beatty right now. And I still think with the uncertainty surrounding Pete Alonso, 
This is not the time to deal Brett Beatty. There is still a world where this guy's a really good player. He was a top 20 prospect in baseball for a reason. He showed this year he can be a very good defensive third baseman. And I still believe in that bat, even though a lot of people don't. I know there's Mets fans that are totally on a different wavelength with, with me on this one. But you know what? There was also Mets fans who were out on Mark Vientos last year. So these guys can come around. There's a world where Brett Beatty is your starting third baseman in 2025 and Mark Fiantos is your starting first baseman. And that's really plan B, I think, if Alonzo walks this offseason. So I would not trade Brett Beatty either. That leads me to Luis and Helicuna. If it was the right deal, I would trade him. And I have floated the idea of trading Acuna whenever I talked about a superstar trade this past offseason. With that said, I think Acuna, bare minimum, is going to be a very good bench player in the big leagues. I think even this year, if the Mets have struggled to find the right fit as the final piece of their bench, Acuna might be the perfect player to go into October with. Uh, remember when uh, the Royals for the World Series, they called the, up uh, Mondesi. I'm blanking on his first name, so I apologize. But was it, is it Alberto Mondesi? Now, now, it's, now I got to find it. I apologize. Mondesi. Adalberto Mondesi, I guess I did nail that. But they called him up for the World Series. Acuna, to me, could be the final piece of the Mets bench. If you call him up and, and you end up adding him to the roster, he gives you speed, he gives you defense. There's a world where he makes sense as a bench piece this year. And moving forward, there's still some upside there. I would not trade him. But if it's the right deal, maybe you talk me into it. Jesus Baez and Jeremy Rodriguez are in that grouping as well to me. Baez had a great run through St. Lucie, ends it up in Brooklyn so far this year, has shown really good power numbers that the Mets hope would translate when he was hitting a bunch of home runs in the Dominican Summer League a couple years ago. Had a rough first year stateside last year. He's rebounded. I would not trade Baez, but if it was the right deal, I'd be talked into it. Same thing with Jeremy Rodriguez, the prospect that came back in the Tommy Fan trade last year and then immediately started shooting up prospect boards He's been great in the complex league. I'd be hesitant to move him as I would with Colin Houck, the Mets first round pick from last year. Hasn't been great this season, but I think it's too soon to trade him. If another team's enamored by him though, and that's the piece that gets the big deal done over it, at least right now, it still would scare me with the upside that he, that he has. But yeah, you, know, you got to give it to get. Noel McLean is in this grouping as well. Has great stuff, but has struggled in double A. I think the Mets hold on to him because of that upside, but other teams would certainly be very interested in nabbing him. So he could get a big deal done as one of the prospects for sure. If Nolan McLean is the piece that gets you Blake Snell and Michael Conforto, and that's really it, it's Nolan McLean and a player to be named later, and Nolan McLean and someone further down your system, I'd entertain it. If that's the piece that potentially gets you an ace for the playoff push, Again, you got to think about the fact that the other team has to get something in these trades. And that's why Ronnie Mauricio is on this list for me as well. I don't think the Mets deal him, but to say he's untouchable, I don't think that that's fair either. Now we get to the final list. This is a list that I sent. Well, I sent all three of these lists to the Locked on Mets insiders today when I was on my flight. For those of you who aren't a Locked on Mets insider, this is our texting service. So you get inside access to the show. Sometimes you get some of my sort of thought processes before I put a show together, I send them to the insiders first. So you get that inside look into the show. You also can ask me questions anytime. And when news breaks on the Mets, I send texts to the insiders first. Here is my list. Number one prospect I'd be ready to deal right now, particularly for bullpen help, Kevin Parada. Number two on my list, Kevin Parada. Number three on my list, Kevin Parada. I'd love to see the Mets trade Kevin Parada at this deadline. He is starting to swing it really well over the past month in double A. Deal him while you can. Get a piece. That's a that's a guy that I think is actively available. The reason being, I don't think he's going to be a good enough catcher to hold his own at the position in the big leagues. And I don't believe enough in the bat to think that he could be a first baseman or a DH. So I'm out on Kevin Parada, but I'm sure that means a lot of teams probably are too. Alex Ramirez is another one that I'm sort of out on. But the Mets protected him from the Rule 5 draft. Maybe there's another team that sees some value there. Ryland Thomas got you something. Alex Ramirez might be able to get you a reliever. Uh, Marco Vargas is on this list. 
the guy they got in the David Robertson trade last year. Maybe you just trade him again to get a reliever back in a season where you're going for it. I also put Ron Hernandez on this list. He was the other piece in that trade last year uh, for David Robertson. So both guys that are probably top 30 prospects in this system, but again, I wouldn't lose sleep over dealing them. Nick Morabito, uh, he is sort of a Rylan Thomas, but at a lower level. You hope that he can be a little bit more because he has speed as a skill that Thomas doesn't. So that's the difference there. Morabito could give you elite speed, good defense, and great bat-to-ball skills. He's an interesting prospect. Would I trade him if it meant a piece that could put you over the top this year? Absolutely. Uh, I did have Thomas on this list, which was what made that so funny when the standing trade came in. The fact that I just said Thomas is a piece who could get moved. Boom, he's moved. Um, and, and it made sense to me why he got dealt because – his ceiling is fourth outfielder probably. So I get why they traded him. Then there's a bunch of arms that I think other teams would be interested in because they are starting pitchers in the upper levels of the minor leagues. Justin Jarvis is one. Tyler Stewart is another. I'd be more willing to trade Jarvis than Stewart, but I wouldn't lose sleep over trading Stewart. Mike Vassell, I would definitely consider trading. He is getting close to the big leagues. Other teams might value that, of course but I don't think that he has ceiling, a ceiling much higher than a fifth starter. So I'd move him if that's going to get you the piece you need. Dom Hamill, I'd be less likely to move. I think of those three, Stewart Vassal, Hamill's the one that I would like to keep the most because I could see him pitching very well in a big league bullpen, if nothing else. Um, and he has the chance to still stick as a starter. So I'd like to keep Dom Hamill, but... I'd be more willing to deal him than any of the other guys I talked about in that previous list, right? Like I'd rather see the match trade Dom Hamill than Nolan McLean. I wouldn't lose too much sleep. Other guys that I just threw at the end, Carlos Cortez, Luke Ritter, JT Schwartz, not really considered big time prospects, but pieces that had performed well in the minor leagues that maybe net you something for Ritter and Schwartz very well this season. Guys similar to a Thomas, that you can deal for a reliever that maybe a team is trying to get off of. Andrew Chafin, a good example of that guy making a little bit of money. Maybe you send a Luke Ritter who has hit really well in AAA and you get that deal done. I don't know if that's enough, but that's just an example of what could happen at this deadline. It's going to be a lot of fun. I think we thought this might be a quiet deadline and it's been anything but that so far. I'm excited to see what moves the Mets make next. And I hope this two-part episode today really primed you for the road ahead. I'm very excited to be home for the deadline. Appreciate all of you who tuned in when I was away. And also for those of you who tuned into both parts of today's two-part episode, make sure you follow, rate, and review wherever you get your podcasts. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. We're trying to make a push to 10,000 subs by the end of the season. So I appreciate all of you who subscribe. Follow me on X at Finkelstein Ryan. Follow the show at Locked On Mets. If you want to be a Locked On Mets insider, find the link in the episode description. Go to subtext.com slash Locked On Mets. Thank you for making Locked On Match your first listener, your first watch every single day. Now for your second watch, head over to YouTube and check out the first ever 24-7 streaming channel that covers everything in the world of sports. We're talking about Locked On Sports today, which is also streaming 24-7 on Amazon Fire TV.